We are now in part 3. IEC 530 has outlined five main requirements which are set forth in para 6 until para 15. These paragraphs will also be read together with the application and other explanatory material. First is the sample design, size and selection of items for testing. Sample design. The auditor shall consider the purpose of the audit procedure and the characteristics of the population from which the sample will be drawn. The auditor also needs to know the combination of audit procedures that is likely to best achieve that purpose. There is a need to define what constitute deviations or misstatements. Under A7, if the expected rate of deviation based on the understanding of the relevant controls is unacceptably high, then the auditor will normally decide not to perform test of controls. Sample size. Para 7, the auditor shall determine a sample size sufficient to reduce sample risk to an acceptably low level. Under A10, the lower the sampling risk, the greater the sample size. If I were to put it to you, if the higher the confidence level, what would be the sample size? Think about it. Under A11, the sample size can be determined by the application of statistically based formula or through the exercise of professional judgment. Factors influencing sample size in regards to attribute sampling. If the auditor desired to have a higher confidence level, which means that the auditor wants to have more assurance that the controls are operating effectively, therefore there is a need to increase the sample size. This is a direct relationship. Tolerable rate of deviation. The auditors will tolerate deviations or provide some allowance or margin of acceptable deviation because there may be other compensating controls and the end result will not be a material monetary misstatement. Therefore, a higher tolerable rate of deviation leads to a decrease in the sample size. This is an inverse relationship. Expected rate of deviation in the population. The higher the expected rate of deviation, the larger or there is a need to increase the sample size because the auditor would want to be in a position to make a reasonable estimate of the actual rate of deviation. Therefore, this is a direct relationship. The size of the population does not have any effect on the sample size. Factors influencing sample size with regard to tests of details. If you were to look at the factor 1, 2, 3, the effect on sample size is the same as with the test of controls. Now, please refer to Appendix 3. But if you were to look at the size of the population, the larger the size of the population, that means there is a need to increase the sample size, which is a direct relationship. This is definitely not the same as uh, compared to the, the size, the, the, the factor of the size of the population for tests of control. Selection of items for testing. Para 8. The auditor shall select items for the sample in such a way that each sampling unit in the population has a chance of selection. A12 statistical sampling. Each sampling unit has a known probability of being selected. A13 the principal methods include the use of random selection, systematic selection, and haphazard selection. See Appendix 4. Second, performing audit procedures. Para 9 states to perform audit procedures on each item selected. Para 10, if it is not applicable, then A14 states that an appropriate chosen replacement is examined. For example, a void check is selected while testing for evidence of payment authorization. Para 11. If the auditor is unable to apply the design audit procedures or suitable alternative procedures to a selected item, the auditor shall treat that item as a deviation from prescribed control in the case of tests of control or a misstatement in the case of tests of details. Under A15, the example given is that 
the documentation relating to that item has been lost. Under A16, the example given is that the examination of subsequent cash receipts together with evidence of their source and the items they are intended to settle when there's no reply that has been received in response to a positive confirmation. Now, I hope you still remember the difference between positive and negative confirmation. Please recap. Third, nature and cause of deviations and misstatements. Para 12, the auditor shall investigate the nature and cause of any deviations or misstatements identified, evaluate their possible effect on the purpose of the audit procedure and on other areas of the audit. Para 13, in the extremely rare circumstances when the auditor considers a misstatement or deviation discovered in a sample to be an anomaly, the auditor shall obtain a high degree of certainty that such misstatement or deviation is not representative of the population. Now, is there any difference between anomaly and also outliers? Think about it. Now, the auditor shall obtain this degree of certainty by performing additional audit procedures to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence that the misstatements or deviation does not affect the remainder of the population. Fourth, projecting misstatements. Para 14. For tests of details, the auditor shall project misstatements found in the sample to the population. If you look under Para A20, for tests of controls, no explicit projection of deviation is necessary since the sample deviation rate is also the projected deviation rate for the population as a whole. We need to refer to ISA 330 Para 17 as well. Para 17, under ISA 330, if deviations from controls upon which the auditor intends to rely are detected, the auditor shall make specific inquiries to understand these matters and their potential consequences and shall determine whether the tests of controls that have been performed provide an appropriate basis for reliance on the controls. Additional tests of controls are necessary or the potential risk of misstatements need to be addressed using substantive procedures are also known tests of details. We are still under ISA 330, refers to A41. The concept of effectiveness of the operations of controls recognizes that some deviations in the way controls are applied by the entity may occur. Deviations from prescribed controls may be caused by such factors as changes in key personnel, significant seasonal fluctuations in volume of transactions and human error. The detected rate of deviation in particular in comparison with the expected rate may indicate that the control cannot be relied on to reduce risk at the assertion level to that assessed by the auditor. Finally, the fifth, evaluating results of audit sampling. Para 15, the auditor shall evaluate the results of the sample. Under A21, for test of control, an unexpectedly high sample deviation rate leads to an increased risk of material misstatement. Meanwhile, for test of details, this may cause the auditor to believe that a class of transaction or account balances is materially misstated. In the case of test of details, the projected misstatement plus anomalous misstatement, if any, is the auditor's best estimate of misstatement in the population. When the projected misstatement plus anomalous misstatement, if any, exceeds tolerable misstatement, the sample does not provide a reasonable basis for conclusions about the population that has been tested. The closer the projected misstatement plus anomalous misstatement is to tolerable misstatement, the more likely that actual misstatement in the population may exceed tolerable misstatement. Also, if the projected misstatement is greater than the auditor's expectation of misstatement used to determine the sample size, the auditor may conclude that there is an un unacceptable sampling risk that the actual misstatement in the population exceeds the tolerable misstatement. Considering the results of other audit procedures helps the auditor to assess the risk that actual misstatement in the population exceeds tolerable misstatement and the risk may be reduced if additional audit evidence is obtained.
Paragraph 15. The auditor shall evaluate whether the use of audit sampling has provided a reasonable basis for conclusions about the population that has been tested. A23. If the auditor concludes that audit sampling has not provided a reasonable basis for conclusions about the population that has been tested, the auditor may request management to investigate misstatements that have been identified and the potential for further misstatements and to make any necessary adjustments or tailor the nature, timing and extent of those further audit procedures to best achieve the required assurance. For example, in the case of test of controls, the auditor might extend the sample size, test an alternative control or modify related substantive procedures are also known as tests of details.